G'day everyone, this is Anthony from EvoTech Pacific and in today's video we're going to create a letter ring or a, uh, a ring that has the letter of the alphabet. You could also use this particular uh, procedure to create number rings as well. So if you're wanting a particular number used as a ring, then you could also use this as well. Now this is Matrix Gold version 3.5. Um, I'm not probably going to be using many of the dynamic tools for this because we're just simply going to break too much of the dynamic history if we do. So we're going to do this a little bit old school and uh, let's start with our finger size. So we're going to select our finger size there. N and a half will be fine here and hit enter. From there, we're going to select our letter that we're going to place on top of here. Or before this, actually, let's create uh, an outside ring rail. So select it, F6 or center mouse button, and go to our outside ring rail. Uh, we're going to then increase that out to say 3.5 thick. Uh, the base here, I'll take that down to say about 1.6 and I'll leave the side here at 1.8 and I'm okay with everything sitting there. Now let's grab our letter. Now you can, if you want to, go into the solid menu and you can use the text tool if that's what you prefer. Uh, I'm gonna go to the tools menu and I'm just going to bring out my text object. Now even though this is dynamic, we are going to break the dynamic history uh, here. So um, I'm just going to use this because I kind of like the way it works at the moment. So at the moment you can see we've got uh, written there matrix gold. Uh, we're going to change that. So we're just going to double click on the text uh, in the text box there. I'm just going to type in an, a capital E. Now I want to select my font and the font that I want to go with is called, uh, where are we here? Bookman old style is what I want. So I'm going to click on that. You can see that the font changed there. And then I'm going to place this just using my gumball commands. I've still got the, um, the text objects builder open. And I'm going to increase that font size to about say seven. And the font depth, I'm going to take that up to about say five mil. And the reason I want to take it up that high is I need the inside uh, ring rail and the outside ring rail to uh, protrude through here. So I want to make sure I'm giving myself enough room there to play with a little bit later on. So I'm going to hit OK to that. That gives me something that looks like this. Now, uh, next thing I want to do is select my E and I'm going to go to the cutters menu and select cut to ring rail. So I'll click on that and select my uh, surface that I want to cut and hit enter. And then you can see here that it's uh, giving me a preview of that cutout, which I'm okay with. So I'm gonna hit okay to that. And um, in an ideal world, you could repeat that process for the outside ring rail, but unfortunately that doesn't work as yet. So what we have to do is we've got to select our outside ring rail here and just in the top viewport here, I'm gonna to go to my green surface menu and select that outside ring rail and we wanna make sure that we extrude it out. So something like that, doesn't matter how far out it goes as long as it clears the letter itself. And we have something that looks like this here. So we can go to split. The command line will ask us to select the object that we wanna split, which is our letter and hit enter. And then the cutting object, which is our surface, and enter again. And now we can delete that part there. And we can reverse this with the surface and using the letter as a cutter. So we'll go again to split. This time we're splitting the surface, enter, with the letter, enter. And we can now delete that surface and what it will give us is something that looks like this. We've got a couple of remnants there, which we'll just select and delete. And now we have all of these sections here. So we're gonna grab all of that just by region selecting everything. And we'll go to join, and that's going to give us one closed poly surface, which is what we're after. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is, um, being that this particular letter being an E, um, 
is going to be, you know, obviously every letter is going to be slightly different to what you do. So uh, with this letter, um, I'm going to have uh, the shank come up and meet each one of these tines of the E here. And then on the side here, the entire back of the E will just sweep down. So how we're going to do this is first of all, I'm going to go to my curve menu and I'm going to grab an arc direction. So click on the little white button there and go to arc direction. And you want to make sure your mid uh, snap is turned on. I'm going to snap to that midpoint right there. And then just in the top viewport, I'm just going to take this out to say something like that. I might put this onto the red layer color just so it's a little bit different. All right, same thing for the opposite side. I'm going to right click to bring back my arc snap to the midpoint there and then in the top viewport I'm going to just create something that looks like maybe that there not too not too heavy an arc and then what we're going to do is scroll all the way to the end and we've got from two view so we're going to click on that one there and we'll select this guy here and this guy here and that gives us that curve there, which I'm happy with. We're going to right click to bring back that last tool and we'll select this one here and this one here again. That gives us our inner uh, rails. And then we'll do the same for the outer rail here. So we'll right click to bring back the last tool. We'll grab that curve there and this curve here. That gives us our outside rail and right click again and we'll bring out this curve here and that outside one there and that'll give us those rails there. It kind of looks a bit messy at the moment but uh, don't be too worried about it. We're going to be doing things fairly fairly methodically. So I'm going to go uh, and select my creation layer next and I want to scroll along to the end here where it's got from object and I will duplicate some edges here. So I'm going to duplicate this edge, that one there, that one there. I'm not going to do the top one, I'll show you why in a sec. Uh, I'm going to grab that, that, and that. And then on the opposite side, we may as well do this while we've got the tool open. I'm going to grab you, you, and that one there, all the way along. So I've got all of those there. And we may as well join those while we've got them. Okay. So before I do anything else, uh, I'm going to also create an arc again. So I'll go to my green layer for this one here and we'll bring back our arc direction. to just kind of bring that up to there. Something like that should be fine, I reckon. And then with this curve, we're going to go back to our from object and select project. And we'll select our E and project that curve into the E there. Now you might be asking, why did I do that? Well. I could have just, um, you know, created a straight line across, but I want to give this uh, design a little bit of dimension to it rather than just having straight lines there. So uh, hopefully this uh, works out to be a little bit nicer than uh, a standard uh, straight uh, profile, straight top profile ring. So now that we've done that, we're then going to just turn off our E and we may as well turn off some of this other confusing stuff just for the moment. And what we need to do is I'm going to select the E and explode it. And then we can get rid of all that central stuff. We don't need any of that. So we can delete all of that. And then what I'm going to do is select everything there and just go to trim. And trim away everything that we don't need. So I don't need that section there and I 
did need that section which I deleted before so I'll have to create that again it's not a big deal So we can see that I accidentally deleted that uh, curve there. We can go back just a couple of stages and just bring that back. And when we uh, select our green section, I'll be a little bit more careful to not select that part there. So we'll go back and select these and get rid of those. Pretty sure we don't need that and we don't need that and everything else should be okay. All right, so we're going to select everything there and we will again go to trim and just delete these top sections here. So get rid of that. And that one there and there. And we should be good, we'll hit enter. And then while it's all highlighted, we'll join all of that up so that there are three closed curves. All right, so let's bring back our E and we'll bring back some of the other uh, curves that we had out there before. Uh, now what I wanna do is I'm going to create a, pro or, uh, yeah, create a profile. So I'll select this curve here and we'll go to profile placer. It's going to place a profile down the bottom here so I'll take that to about there I think and I'm going to select a different profile this uh, kind of squarish profile here will be fine for that I think and with that we're going to make sure that we select our outside curve which is going to be curve there and that should conform to that when we spin it around so if I spin that around then that should conform now you might need to do a little bit of playing around I'm only going to create one profile here um, so I really need to make sure that this is I guess as straight as possible and uh, at the moment it's not terribly straight so say something like that there I'm also going to adjust the height of that well, not the height but the angle of that so it sits up fairly straight something like that so it's not 90 degrees but it's you know closer to 90 than not and I um, just want to check that from a few other angles here so you know, maybe just bring that around touch and then we'll also take that in to about say two and a half mil and hit OK to that now that we've got that uh, profile sitting there we're going to go to our surface menu and we'll select our standard sweep two. So sweep two, this one here, and then that one there. And then we'll select the sweep profiles. So that one there and there and enter. We wanna make sure that our points are in the middle and facing the same direction. So something like that there will be fine and hit enter okay to that we end up with something that looks like that which I'm not terribly happy with so let's um, let's maybe move this we'll edit this and maybe edit it a little bit straighter and see if that makes a difference so we'll sweep that again so you and you and then you and you enter bring that back around section yeah that's better all right I'm better with that so sweep to you and then you and then this and that curve there make sure that that's in the middle Okay to that and we end up with something that looks like that so you can see here that on this one we've got you know a slight um, you know it's not straight on the top there same with this one here and then what we'll do for those or what we'll do next is we'll select our inside ring rail place a profile 
we'll make sure we hit outside curve and select the outside there so it conforms. Take that down to six o'clock and we'll take that out to say maybe four and a half mil wide. Change the profile to this number two profile here and hit OK to that. Okay, the next thing we'll do is we'll do a sweep two. So we will select our sweep two option and select from you and you and then the sweep shapes. So we'll select that curve there and this curve here, enter. Just making sure that these are sweeping in the right direction there. So right in the middle there and that's in the middle as well and we'll hit enter and hit OK to that. And then we'll do the same thing for the opposite side. So we will sweep to, select this one here and here, that curve there and this curve here. And again, making sure that they are sitting in the middle, pointing to the same direction. And then hit enter and hit OK. And we end up with something that looks like this. So when we turn off all of the noise, you can see that we've got um, a section here that isn't flat. It's you know got a very slight arc to it, which gives the uh, the design a little bit more dimension, sweeping nicely or blending nicely into the bottom of the shank here, which we can select both of these here and hit join. And that'll be now join surface. These ones here, uh, I'm going to just cap planar those. So I'm going to hit cap planar for that one there. Do the same thing for that one there. So they're now two solids as well. The other thing that isn't solid, if we hide this E, you can see up the top here that won't be solid. That's easy fixed. So we can select the, uh, the blue section there and just hide it. So I'm going to hide you. And we're going to go to split, select the object to split, which is that, and enter with the cutting object, which is going to be the actual profile that we've used there before, and hit enter again. We're then going to delete that surface there, making this an open poly surface. And then when we bring back our blue shank, we can select the shank and the E and hit join. And that will join those up into one closed poly surface. So let's put that on a less offensive color and we end up with something that looks like this. Now you may, if you needed to, you may uh, you know, need to boolean these in but what I would do is simply select everything once it was ready and uh, I'd go to the manufacturing tab and I'd simply mesh repair it and from there you'll end up with a, a fully watertight mesh ready for 3D printing. All right, so that is how I would do something like that. As I said before, uh, every different um, letter or number that you choose to be in here will be slightly different to create, but this is what you uh, would tend to, or what I would tend to do, or how I would tend to design something like this. All right, if you found this video helpful, then please feel free to subscribe. Uh, it really does help us out. I hope that helps.